uh, so do it. It was really difficult for her, and uh, she they had to fight against a cloud of stereotypes. So, on the one hand, their own families. On the other hand, uh, the stereotypes and based attitudes of the male and female members of the working class and then of the male uh, members of the um, academic uh, intellectual elites. So, um, by um, Katie Leichter, uh, had all these problems in a yes, remarkable uh, extent, and she had also a problems uh, within uh, the um, chamber of the label with anti Semitism. And um, we have to note it, that uh, her withdrawal from general theoretical questions, which was not total, was present. Uh, for all other things, the, the turn to predominantly women's political issue had profound consequences for her, possibilities for developing society question, and her standing in career and the social democratic party and the also Marxist movement. So sometimes you have the feeling when uh, uh, women work in the uh, field of women's question, there's um, a playground, a little bit of playground and don't disturb the um, adults. So in this um, way, I would also uh, see the whistle of uh, Kete Leifert. At the first time, Kete Leifert was shunted from the main field into the labor chamber, seemed obvious. But I would say one must also ask whether her retreat from theoretical and economic questions could have been based on her own position. Uh, this might have been the case, but seems questionable. Um, if anything, the facts do not support a voluntary and independent change of research focus. Uh, Gabriele Hauch uh, pointed out that there were no writings by her on women's politics until 1925, uh, when she resigned from the Socialization Commission, and that Kate Leifert was a proponent of the Marxist theory of secondary contradiction. So, thus for her, the emancipation question was locate, located in the political and economic sphere. And also, um, um, to lose, uh, underline this fact and that she never uh, um, wrote anything about uh, women's political issues before 1925. In the biography of uh, Katie Leifert, there were some surprising turns old. So, that wouldn't um, that one wouldn't count the in a male biography or career. She's known for her pioneering work in the field of science, social science, reviewing women's work and the lives of working class women, and not so much as uh, women's politicians. Uh, she was involved in trade union work and built up the Women's Department of the Chamber of Labor, which she also had it until 1934 as an intellectual and social scientist specialized in women's and equality um, and, 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 me, and women's issues and as a feminist. She had a great influence and uh, issues of women's liberation as well as in the uh, Austrian Marxist movement and the uh, Social Democratic Party and the trade union. Given, given this fact, the high level of expertise, uh, experiences, it is surprising that the party leadership 
did not nominate Leica for membership of the National Council. Um, as we know, and this is very important for the uh, or to understand Pente Leica and her position and uh, uh, also Marxism. Katie Leica wanted to move to Frankfurt and so a position at Karl Grunberg's Institute for Social Research, later known as the Frankfurt School. Also her husband, Otto Leica, had already applied for a job at Frankfurter Volksschule. Obviously, she wanted to work on scientific and theoretical issues. Herbert Steiner pointed out that writer wrote to Friedrich Adler seeking support for her Frankfurt project. And um, as he told her, it like a vote, I thought, uh, it would make my decision to leave much easier if I knew I could find a new sphere of activity at Grunberg's Institute, end quote. Friedrich Adler told her to wait and see as this would probably fail. And she liked the had a quote, a solution for the time being that would probably be much more in line with her wishes, end quote. The background for this assumption is not known. Of course, it could have been a mere put off by a man who saw that a woman who was looking for a job in scientific scientific institute had a position suitable for her anyway. Uh, how speculated that the opportunity she was uh, offered in the other department chamber of um, labor uh, was uh, have suited um, life. At this point, the question must ask whether this would not have been able to a much greater extent at the unit, uh, Institute of the Social Research. So why uh, could it Adler refuse to help her? And uh, we have no idea about it, we didn't know it. And, um, but it was a surprising uh, thing that Adler refused to write a letter to uh, Greenberg and help her. Um, and when we look about the uh, uh, thematic focus of Kita uh, like, <laughs> then we have to see um, at the field we can, uh, in which she can choose the, uh, um, the paper thematics. Um, she w um, wrote about um, economic issues. So, for example, um, there, she was invited to, to um, um, be a, um, a part of the first in celebrating the 70th birthday of Kautsky in Grunberg. Uh, and for Kautsky's first shift, Living Marxism, she wrote uh, the extensive article Experiences of Also Attempt in Socialization. And uh, for Grunberg's first shift, she wrote an equal extensive account from revolutionary syndicalism to the nationalization of, of the trade union. One book appeared in 1924. The other book appear, uh, was uh, published in 1932. So uh, you, you see that when she was free, then she wrote about um, theoretical issues. So, uh, as a side note, uh, the history of Austrian labor movement and the Socialist Party, um, we have to notice, in my opinion, a strong uh, 
she it is a strong market by a general social conservatism, not the political conservatism, but the social one. Um, so we there is um, uh, a tendency toward essential reforms. There are the fraternization of groups of men and the exclusion and elimination of the undesirables. And this group always included women and also always included Jews. For Kitty Leifen, it meant a retreat from the realm of theoretical and political work into the realm of spe women specific free operations uh, and trade union women's politics. So the positions she, ha she held in the Chamber of Labor was a central one for further development in the field of women's work and the women's art. A scientist. Nevertheless, the question must be asked whether she was not ultimately pushed from the open stage of federal politics into a framework that meant um, work for working women and in front of women. Um, when we ask why she never received the national council mandate. Her husband, Otto Leifer, uh, pointed out that she was ideologically very left wing and that she was Jewish. Yes, but moreover, as mentioned, as a woman, she had an additional hurdle to overcome. So, because uh, in the Austro Marxist movement, there were a lot of persons left wing and also there were Jews. So, I think um, the great question was there were men and she was a woman. Uh, Le Weiss, who also underlined that the woman's decision was not like his first choice, wrote, uh, quote, she was in the right place at the right time. And wrote, this is true about the place. But the question is whether it was also the right place for her and whether the position should not be interpreted as a downgrading seen as such by herself and the male members of the party leadership. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for this very, very interesting and uh, valuable contribution. We rarely uh, hear accounts on, on women in Austro-Marxism. That is uh, precisely why we have chosen to, to contribute to it uh, also with, the, with this panel uh, on our conference. So I would now like to open the floor. We have additional 15 minutes for the discussion. That means for the questions. Uh, I would like to open the floor for the questions. Uh, are there questions? Yes, Walter Bayer. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for this um, important contribution. Uh, I must admit that the sound which we had here was not uh, very good, so I'm keen to read your contribution. Um, regarding Katie Leichter, uh, I, I want to say I never met her, of course. However, I feel uh, very close emotionally to her since I had the privilege to meet um, Rosa Jochmann and Gerti Schindel, those who were with her in the concentration camp. And I always had the impression that uh, the women in Ravensbrück, uh, who kept their relation after the war, were able to maintain a solidarity which among the other uh, communities uh, from the concentration camps never was possible to, um, to maintain. And all these uh, women referred so warm-heartedly to Käthe Leichter. So I, uh, it is as if, uh, as if she, she, she was somebody whom I met personally. 
Second, I, I would like to mention this because it's also remarkable that the representative, and as far as I'm concerned, the earliest uh, biographical work on Käthe Leichter was published by an enlightened communist, uh, namely Herbert Steiner in the 60s. Uh, remarkable, very remarkable, because uh, Herbert Steiner became then the uh, founder and first director of the Dokumentationsarchiv of the österreichischen uh, Widerstands. And uh, thirdly, um, Käthe Leichter is actually one of the reasons why we deliberately and explicitly uh, lay focus in our project on Austro-Marxism on the reconstructions of the women's contributions to it. Because you are absolutely right, this is underrated, and it's not to the detriment of the women, it's to the detriment of uh, what Austro-Marxism in, in its full richness actually uh, represents. And this particularly holds true for Kete Leichter. And the last remark which I want to make concerns something which uh, I put into discussion yesterday. This is the uh, research proposal uh, which Kete Leichter submitted to the Frankfurt Institute. The document is not uh, easily attributable because it's not signed by herself, uh, but um, there is uh, an agreement that it is written by her. And it refers to the title is, if I'm uh, not wrong, authoritarianism in the labor movement. And I must say, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it, it's a fascinating topic uh, because uh, she places uh, the critique uh, on the austro marxist part and the Social Democratic Party, uh, not in, in, in this frame, which is usually the hot debate, either should they go into a coalition or should uh, they prepare for the civil war, which are important questions, however. But what she is asking critically is what kind of party culture was this, and how could uh, an emancipatory party, a programmatically emancipatory party, also, uh, so to say, liberate the emancipatory creativity of the working class? And I think this is a question still unsettled, and I'm not a fundamentalist in, 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 in any respect, because you must accept that you never accomplish fullnessness, and particularly not in politics. But that's why I think it's so important to ask this question continuously in order to initiate processes of emancipation within the parties, even under conditions of capitalist dominance. Yes. Reply, uh, Barbara. Uh, yes, uh, excuse me, but the sound is also in my direction very, very poor. Uh, so <laughs> I have a problem the, the two days of war. I agree with you totally because I, the, um, the Social Democratic Worker Party, they wanted or want to educate the people. So I'm, uh, and maybe the, the worker. Uh, the members of the worker class uh, should be uh, educated person and uh, so little bourgeois, not uh, uh, fully bourgeois, but a little bit in this direction. And they have no sense of uh, own liberated uh, movement. So I think the uh, also Marxist uh, uh, academic elites uh, see saw themselves as the leaders and they don't want to change this. So I'm completely with you. Uh, thank you. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we, we, uh, we hear you. Uh, we have, uh, we, we heard everything. Uh, do, uh, do you want to say something more or should I uh, give the floor to the questions again? No, thank you. Uh, uh, should I? No, I think so. Uh, no, no, I just wanted to ask you if you want to continue uh, with, uh, with, with an answer or a comment to, to Walter, or should I open the floor for new questions? No, I, I uh, uh, want to underline that um, I see the problems he uh, um, pointed out, because uh, 
I think the idea was um, a two class system, the academic one and the uh, worker classes. So I, I don't see that the uh, Social Democratic Worker Party, the um, leaders uh, really want a, um, a society for equals or the of equals. Uh, so, thank you, Nora. Do we have uh, do we have other questions? Uh, Walter Bayer has another question. No, not a question, a comment or mm -hmm. or a, a contribution to the debate, because I, I believe um, that that is too strict. Um, maybe it's difficult that we Austrians communicate uh, through English language, uh, but um, uh, I, I think uh, we have to place the Austro-Marxist uh, experiment in the frame of the time. And uh, Käthe Leichter uh, also very, very uh, deliberately joined the Social Democratic Party. It was her conviction that it was a progressive party, that it was an emancipatory party, and it was worth the effort uh, to change the, the, the society. I, I really, I hold, we must, uh, we must all cherish uh, the culture of criticism and self-criticism, but we should not be unjust in not valuing, valuing what they have achieved. And um, uh, I think it, that is the most difficult thing, that uh, labor movement, social democratic movement, as a historic movement, uh, at least in Austria, generated the most, the biggest leap forward in all our national history and I should we and I think uh, we should uh, uh, so to say uh, evaluate this uh, yes of course uh, um, the social democratic uh, party and the, the labor movement they are, are the only one who change any want to change anything because the Austrian society is so a conservative, it's a conservative society. But <laughs> but when you look at uh, how open-minded in 19, uh, 1920s, 1990, uh, 1919 was, so uh, a lot of social laws uh, passed the National Council at that time. Uh, it was a game changer. 1919 and but uh, in spite of all these um, victories and new things and the doors uh, that were opened you have one problem the liberation of women also in the trade union also by men who are uh, who uh, refused this because you have also the the power relation within the families and 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 equal wages were equal work N never mind and this is my uh point of critique not that there are not the the movement to open the doors for changing and th in this time uh, this was a great a phenomenal a phenomenal uh, movement because most of the, you will people will be surprised most of the important social laws uh, passed the uh, so um, the parliament in 1919 so there was a great movement but i don't see it was a great uh, um uh willingness to change the power relationship totally and this is the problem but because um, then the backslashes can uh, find um, a point for working 